How's it going? This is Ryan with Front End Audio, and today I'm going to show you how to set up an audio interface in Magic's Samplitude Pro X. Okay, so one thing to note is that if you've already got your audio interface set up as the main audio device for your computer, it will auto-populate within Samplitude, as you'll see here with my Echo Audio Layla. Okay, so when we start up Samplitude, we first come to the Start Wizard. We don't need that here, so go ahead and close that out, and then hit Y on your keyboard, and that will bring up the system's options. Here on the left-hand side, you will see the browser window for navigating through the various options within Samplitude. The only three options we need to worry about is Audio System, Audio Devices, and MIDI, your top three. First, we're going to select Audio Systems. Now here at the top, we're first going to select our driver format. We're probably all using Osseo today because that's the universal format, but you do have options for MME as well as WDM. My interface uses Osseo, so I'm going to select that. Choose what's right for your interface. So next, we're going to go to the Osseo setup options. First, we're going to select our Osseo device. Mine is the Echo PCI, so we're going to select that. And then below that is your clock source. It's going to default to select from console, which is the only option because your audio interface should be the master clock. Below that is your Osseo buffer, and it's going to show you your buffer size and the bit rate. And next to that, you're going to have a button to pull up your control panel for your audio interface where you can adjust your buffer if necessary. Now below your buffer setting, you're actually going to be able to see your input and output latency in samples, and milliseconds. So as you can see here at 24 bit with a buffer of 256, I have an output latency of 315 samples or seven milliseconds and an input latency at 304 samples or seven milliseconds. And of course, if I adjust my buffer, it will auto update to show you what your input output latency is. So you can pick the appropriate buffer size for your system. Now below that is your buffer settings for Samplitude itself. This is going to handle the buffer setting for the internal DSP. So whether you're using the EQ on the mixer, whether you're using a Samplitude plugin or a third party plugin, this is where you're going to adjust your buffer for best performance. You can adjust it in a wide range and it will also show you your output latency so that you can select the best buffer size. Next is your device resolution option, and this is where you're going to select between 16, 24, or 32-bit resolution. Next is your monitoring options, where you're going to choose how your monitoring functions, as well as choose the audio engine type, whether it's your classic engine, the hybrid engine, or a variant in between. Now, the hybrid engine is exclusive to Samplitude, and what it does is provides a low-latency Osseo engine that handles real-time monitoring for recording tracks and virtual instruments, as well as the processing of real-time effects. On the other side of things, you have a high-latency VIP audio engine that will handle complex effects and playback. And what this does is it takes the weight off your computer of having to have everything processed through one low-latency engine. Now, if you adjust this selection slider here, a pop-up window comes up that will show you the different functions of the various settings. What is going to be assigned to Samplitude, what is going to be assigned to Osseo, and what is going to be assigned to your hardware. And below this, you also see a description that auto-updates so that you can pick what is appropriate for your setup. Now, Magix always recommends using the hybrid engine that's what I use, so let's stick with that. Next is your monitoring behavior where you have the choice between tape mode and manual mode. Now with manual monitoring, it is what it sounds like. You have to manually activate and deactivate monitoring by selecting the speaker icon on your arm to track. Now tape monitoring acts just like a tape machine. You will hear your live monitoring input on any armed track while in a stop or record but during playback, you're only going to hear what's been recorded. Below that is an option where it says mix input with playback. With that selected, you're going to be able to hear your input and your playback. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the browser window and we're going to select audio devices. Here, you're going to be able to view all available inputs and outputs, as well as activate and deactivate them 
by simply checking or unchecking the box next to them. You can also adjust the order in which they appear. By clicking on Device Info, you have the ability to bring up your control panel for your interface. You can also rename your inputs and outputs. So for instance, inputs one through eight on my interface are analog inputs and the rest are digital. So I can name one through eight as analog and nine through 14 as digital. And you can reset these options. And that's it for this window. So let's now go back to the browser window and select MIDI. And here you're going to see many of the same options we just saw in the audio devices window because you're going to have the option to activate and deactivate your MIDI inputs and outputs, adjust the order, and rename them. And below this, you're going to have drop-down menus for setting your global record and playback device for your MIDI. Next is your MIDI recording options, and the first option is your record offset. You enter a value in milliseconds, and this will determine the time difference which passes between when a MIDI command is sent and when that MIDI information is placed in the arrangement window. Next is your retrorespective recording option. With that activated, Samplitude will actually record any incoming information to RAM for a selected and ARM-ready track, even if you're not recording. And next to that, you have your buffer size value in seconds that you can select for how much information is going to be recorded. And this is a really cool feature because if you're like me and you're listening to playback and you're just trying to work out a part and you don't have it recorded and you do something really cool that you wanted to keep, well, now you can capture that from RAM and it's in your session. Next is your audio MIDI sync options. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's for fine tuning your MIDI to make sure it syncs appropriately with your audio. You can activate it or deactivate it. You have your force sync value and percentage that you can adjust to fine tune your sync. And you have use sample exact reference clock from audio device. And this will reference the clock for your audio device to sync your MIDI appropriately. Next, you have your automatic volume fader mode for your MIDI tracks. It defaults to controller seven, and this basically functions like a fader on an audio track would. And then you have don't change volume fader mode, which will essentially deactivate your fader. And then you have MIDI velocity scaling, which will scale your fader to the velocity of the track. So it will vary depending on the MIDI information. Next, you have activate SysX input, and this will allow Samplitude to receive system exclusive information from your MIDI device. Next is the use system time for MIDI timestamps. With this selected, your MIDI device's MIDI timestamp will be ignored, and the MIDI information will be forced to synchronize to the system time, and this is really helpful for getting your MIDI to properly sync to your audio. Next is the link VIP queue and MIDI editor queue. This option will link your quantization between your virtual project and your MIDI editor. And next, you have a very unique function here to deactivate all MIDI functions. So if you're never going to be using MIDI, you can select that and all your MIDI functions will go away. Next is your on note chasing, and this has the effect that held MIDI notes are also played back when they receive their on note command and arrangement before your playback starts. Next is the send all notes off to VST instruments option. With this selected, what it will do is send a notes off command at the end of the note to your VST instrument so that you don't have overhang. And that's it. Your audio interface is now set up in Samplitude Pro X. So go ahead and hit OK to save your options. So now that you have your interface set up, we can get to making a multi-track session. Um, click this link right here, and I'll show you how to do that. For more information on Magic Samplitude Pro X and for all your pro audio needs, check us out on the web at www.frontendaudio.com. Thank you.